I'm Jess, and welcome to Spooky Movie Club. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Spooky Movie Club. This is week two of Horror Comedy Month. We watched Night of the Creeps, starring Tom Atkins' mustache, the lovely Tom Atkins. I hope you enjoyed watching it this week. I'm going to read the back of the box, but if you want to skip ahead to next week's spooky movie or the discussion, I'm going to leave timestamps below. This is Night of the Creeps. This redesigned cover art from Screen Factory is excellent. This is the original cover art. I think I like their version better, in my opinion. I just think it rocks. Hold, please. It just gets stuck. Okay, Night of the Creeps. The good news is your date is here. The bad news is he's dead. We'll get into that. We'll get into that later. This, this starts off with, thrill me! <laughs> when an alien experiment goes awry, it crashes to Earth in 1959 and infects a young college student. 27 years later, his cryogenically frozen body is thought out by fraternity pledges, and the campus is quickly overrun by alien creatures whose victims turn into zombies. Fred Decker's thoroughly enjoyable throwback chiller definitely mixes all sorts of genres while simultaneously having fun with, with them. The college and all the leading characters are named after famous horror movie directors. I didn't catch on to that. Um, probably should have read the back of the box before I started that because that would have been um, interesting. A couple things I want to call out here for the back of this box. How it's excellent is it thrill me is right beginning. Bloody Disgusting says a fantastic horror movie. There is so much to love about Night of the Creeps that I have no idea where to begin. Um, I think I talked about, I don't know if I mentioned it in last week's video, I pointed to this picture or if I just said it casually um, uh, when we did Saturday's, the, the discussion of Serial Mom, but um, you have to put this on here just to, to just be like, what is this? Um, but yeah, that is Night of the Creeps. Let's get to my three things. So the first thing I want to discuss about Night of the Creeps is the opening scene, um, I guess until you get to the 1980s. First of all, we have to discuss those pudgy, doughy <laughs> aliens. I'm not really sure <laughs> what that was all about. Um, don't know really what they were doing, but they were just the weird... Like, if you could picture an alien design an alien, I want to know who did the creature design because they were shocking when they come on the screen because you're like, what am I watching? It almost looked like a doughboy, a doughboy alien. Um, but in general, that whole first opening sequence reminded me a lot of some of my favorite um, horror films. Um, one in particular being Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This is why I'm wearing my shirt because I love Killer Clowns. Um, the opening is almost exactly the same where they're at it throughout the, they're at the lookout point and they see the shooting star and the police ex-boyfriend comes up. I want to know what Kill Clowns was made. I don't remember what the ex-boyfriend comes up and is like, who is this Peggy? Whoever the lady's name was. And, um, then we, we got to go check this out. And then they drive and they end up getting murdered. But like very similar to Killer Clowns opening also very similar to the Blob remake. I haven't seen the original the Blob remake where they see the thing shoot down from space and then the homeless guy and his dog, I think he had a dog, go to check it out um, and then he gets infected. Same, similar concept. Um, the leeches, that's in, you know, reminded me of The Faculty, which isn't, a good film at all. I've rewatched it. It's not very good. Um, but they, and then they obviously infect the humans and then turn them into crazy alien people, um, which I think was based off uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So I think all of these kind of have a 1950s sci-fi B-movie thread to them. I know that Killer Clowns, that's kind of what it was based off of. The Blob was based off of the 1950s version. Um, 
And so I liked that whole tie-in. It was like, made me feel like, oh, this reminds me of this. But also that was bad because I was like, is it as good as Killer Clowns? Is it as good as The Blob? So for me, that was kind of like a detriment that it kind of reminded me of all my favorite ones. Yes, that's, that's my first thing. So the second thing I want to talk about is the story and kind of the pacing in general. We came off of a high serial mom where she just, you just get thrown right in. And I mentioned how much I loved that. That's the, one of the things I loved about Fright Night. One of the things I loved about Return of the Living Dead, you just get immediately right into it and then the jokes keep coming and coming and coming. Uh, <laughs> Rump Roast, I'm not sure if he agrees or disagrees. Unsure. Um, the Night of the Creeps starts off rather slow and it's a slow kind of build to the main finale which is kind of typical of what all movies are, but I was expecting to kind of get right into it. And so the slowness kind of was a drag for me, especially coming off of Serial Mom, so that, that, that I, maybe we should have watched Eye of the Creeps first instead of second, because Serial Mom was such a high and I wasn't expecting that. Um, also, I have to mention the cover. I mentioned that this cover up better not disappoint me. Um, and it's, I don't want to say it disappointed me, but I wanted this, I wanted more of that moment, more moments of the girls, like, meeting their dead boyfriends and, like, not knowing that they're dead. Like, when, I don't remember what her name is, Gracie, Kelly, who cares, she, Bradster, but I remember Bradster, can't forget him, the villain with the platinum, 80s villain with the platinum blonde hair. When Bradster's dead, and she's not even t paying attention, she's not even noticing, and she takes him down stuff. She's like, I'm sorry, I didn't call you. Like, I wanted more of that. Like, that was hilarious. I wanted more little sorority ladies trying to go to the formal with their dead boyfriends, not realizing it. I wanted more of that. That's what that cover screams to me, and I feel like I didn't get that, but again... I knew going into it that my expectations were very high. So I guess I should probably let that slide. And the third thing, the last thing I want to discuss is the best part of this movie. And that is Tom Atkins. I wasn't, first of all, he's not the lead character by any means. He is not the lead. He's a supporting role. Um, and I wasn't expecting to like him as much because we watched Halloween 3 and I thought you know his character was just kind of like whatever it was funny but this oh my god over the top I would have watched an hour and a half of Tom Atkins just playing his character he had so many catchphrases thrill me you know or like ladies got some good news and some bad news what's the good news your dates are here what's the bad news they're dead. He just has a cigarette in his mouth and he's <laughs> his character he it he seemed like he was having so much fun. His character was so over the top and so hilarious. Every time he was on screen, I enjoyed it. He made the film. I think he is Night of the Creeps. It is Tom Atkins and I wanted more Tom. Is there a cut? You know there is a director's cut with an extra 2 minutes. Is it an extra 2 minutes of Tom? Because I'm watching that right now. We gotta look at that up. If it's an extra two minutes of Tom, I'm watching the director's cut like tomorrow. So my final thoughts on Night of the Creeps are my final thoughts are that I think on a second watch and rewatches, I think I'll enjoy it more. I think I said the same exact thing about Halloween Three, just because I know what I'm getting into, I know what to expect. And I know that Tom Atkins is amazing. I'm definitely watching the director's cut because I have to know what that extra two minutes is. But I think where we, where I, where I failed everyone in the setup of this, of this spooky movie horror comedy month was setting Serial Mom before Night of the Creeps because to me, Serial Mom was just a high note. It was a 10 out of 10. Everyone go out and watch Serial Mom. And immediate fun, immediate action immediate comedy than to a, a more traditional kind of setup of a film for sex and night third act 
where it's a slower pace until the final showdown. I don't want to say I'll never watch this again, but if I'm like comparing it to another horror comedy like Serial Mom or even Fright Night, I have to say that this is kind of below those. Even if I'm thinking about it in terms of like that 1950s throwback sci-fi situation, I think there are better films in my opinion. So this isn't going to be like my go-to watch, um, but I do think it's worth watching and I will re-watch it. I just don't know if it's high up on that rewatch list. All right, so that is week two. We are done with Night of the Creeps. If you haven't, I mean, if you are a Tom Atkins fan and you've never seen Night of the Creeps, definitely check it out. It is worth just the watches for Tom Atkins in general. We're now on to week three of Horror Comedy Month, and this is highly recommended, highly requested. Again, it is one I've never seen before. All these movies are this month are ones I've never seen. I think when people think of horror comedies, I kind of want to say that this is probably at least in this day and age, what they think of, I want to say, because whenever I say a horror comedy, this is like the first thing that gets mentioned. So week three, highly anticipated, is Shaun of the Dead. I We just did Zombie Month. So it's kind of a throwback to Zombie Month. Um, I didn't want to throw this in that month because we were doing the return of the living dead and i didn't want to have two horror comedies kind of in the same in the same month but i am excited to watch this everybody i've talked to loves this film and i don't think it'll disappoint because i think all around everybody talks very highly of it um this is the steel book i know nothing about it i just know it's a horror comedy about zombies and that's it So I am excited to watch it this week. All right, that wraps it up for this week's Spooky Movie Club. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to join us for the viewing party of Shaun of the Dead on Wednesday, we're going to do that at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Discord. And if you want to join us for the live discussion, we're going to do that on Saturday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch. We're playing through Outlast 2. Um, I've played it for two weeks already and I'm not even through the first chapter. We move very slowly. (laughs) So no pressure if you want to join. (laughs) But I'm going to leave links below to both of those things if you want to hang out with us. If not, no worries. We'll be back here on Sunday with the review. Bye.